God. Speak to us that we will hear and we will know what is upon the heart of God. May the people hear. Twenty twenty four. You have entered into a new time now. So it would be upon your calendar. Pay attention, says the Spirit of God, to twenty four. Because this is a governmental year. And it's not just a governmental year concerning politics, but it is a governmental year concerning the court of heaven. And my court, my justice, my righteousness that has come into the earth in 2024. And seated with me in the court of heaven are the 24 elders of the Lamb. And they sit here this year of 24 because of the governmental shift that is coming to the earth that will affect nations, leaders, politics, legislation, justice, judges. For the 24 elders have held the prayers of a remnant people in their hands and the eternal advocate Yeshua has stood amongst the 24 elders gathering the prayers of you who have prayed therefore we have reached a verdict and this that we have reached this verdict shall be the entering in of the rest that I have said to you I will rest my case. Therefore, I will involve myself with your politics. I will involve myself and there will be a scattering. There will be a gathering. There will be changes. That which is different than what you see now. And they will say, this is what represents us. And God says, I will disrupt, I will interrupt, and I will disappoint. But I will reach my satisfaction. Because even now, pray, 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 says the Spirit of God. For there are those who have sought in times past to bring about hostility harassment harshness to think that they can bring about a stealing of your freedoms they gather now and they know that they are losing grip they are losing power they are losing their way God says they gather and say what must we do now it's not working they will seek to bring civil unrest to the cities upon this nation United States and they will seek to cause chaos to happen but you must pray and they seek to allow those who have come into this country to wound you and to bring this nation into a time of war. But the God, the invincible one, the King of glory steps in at this time. And there will be wars and rumors thereof. And there will be fires that will arise here and there. But do you think that this will stop the verdict that has been declared and now decreed in the earth by the great God the elders and the eternal advocate do you think that this is 
the end of all things I say to you listen I said I would give the harvest to my son the greatest harvest and I said that I would give a generation to the children at this time not of the season that you have seen and you have been a part of so listen carefully as Yeshua in the earth with his finger wrote in the sands they put down their rocks they ran in fear the verdict of the court of heaven comes now and Yeshua writes again and this time it is written in decrees that you will see volcanoes the Vatican vacancies verdicts vindication victories and vendetta what does this mean my justice will rule at this time and because my justice is in the earth pay attention to judges who have thought that they could legislate according to briberies oh yes I will expose that there has been shaking of hands behind the scenes therefore pay attention as I involve myself now as the verdict is written across the things that will take place in this governmental year I will reset I will remove I will reverse and I will require that the guilty be brought to justice <laughs> pay attention there will be many signs and I will smoke it out in Iran I will expose it from the soil of Syria and I will shake it in Estonia and I will call it forth from Ukraine and I will show the earth how there has been a plotting a planning a strategy a working together of evil but God says there has been a countering that I will reveal and I will show for the one who all of heaven looks to and says who 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 is worthy to open the seals the Lord eternal God he stands in this governmental year and it shall be known as the day of reckoning and it shall be known as the time of unsealing things in deep places hidden places some have gone on and they are no more but their names their names will be brought to a place of guilt and there are those who are alive who are trembling at this time because they know who they are and what they have done they cannot hide neither can they run but they will take some their own life because the time of reckoning 
and the time of unsealing is upon the earth now and what they've done to the children demands justice what is this you will say with the Pope what is this with a chief justice what is this with the loud and the boisterous why are they shaking their networks those who have reported and knew that they were reporting falsely watch and see but there will be signs that this is a change of season now as ominous dark clouds will gather across the earth and men will say what is this we've not seen it like this the heights the depths the width the darkness of these clouds and God says it's to so show that the season is changing and the downpours of rain shall be great United Kingdom you have held men and you held women as queens as prince and of royalty yet what has been done has been secret dirty and has crossed the line United Kingdom your day of reckoning is coming to show you you don't have the royalty you think you do and there shall be an eruption a great eruption in the earth pay attention a great great eruption pay attention this is not just a natural eruption this is the earth vomiting and so I will shake you Vatican and I will show you that you cannot be hide behind a cloth that is filthy Even now, they mock the God of Israel. They mock the God of the whole earth. They mock the God of you, United States, and they laugh at you. Yet I shall not be mocked, saith the Lord. And what man has sowed they shall surely reap. Much will be done in the first five months of your year to spin it out of control, to bring confusion, to bring lies, to convince men they are sick. To convince men that hostility is the way yet pay attention as spring comes so shall a great wind arise and a shifting will begin to take place that will accelerate you through your summer months and bring a preservation over this land
that what they seek to do I will frustrate their purpose come on just lift up your hands for a minute thank you Lord come on just lift up your hands those of you that are watching Lord God of hosts we worship you we worship you you have promised that we would come into rest rest from our enemies now may the vengeance of God come among the earth of those who are trying to interrupt God righteousness justice morality and may thy kingdom come and may thy will be done have your way God have your say that men will know in the earth that there is God and that you would receive your honor as you did over Pharaoh and over the Egyptian army get your honor God over the enemies who have tried to destroy this country because you will not be mocked it's time for you to act act of exposure exposure act it's time for these things to manifest God and for you to have your way We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Come on, just worship him for a moment. Those of you that are watching, worship him. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Be it done according to your word. We worship you. 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 We honor you. Oh God, we receive your rest. We receive, God, all that you're saying, all that you're doing. Change is in the air. Come on, somebody shout, change is in the air, in the air. Come on, change. Thank you, Lord. Now give God a big shout of praise. Man, I keep seeing this thing. It keeps coming up. I, got, I know we got to pray. Spirit of God says one of the things that I am doing because what was done by the hands of men perpetrated by evil spirits to steal to kill and destroy human lives through other things God says I will cause it now to rain upon the just and the unjust and there will come great stopping and restraint as I've said before who do you think you are and I speak of who you shall not be allowed to do what you think that you will do to the people to afflict them for you will be found out you will be greatly shaken therefore I will give back and I will cause a glory to rest upon the earth that there will be those who will suddenly who are afflicted will say something is different I am healed who has touched me some will not know who has touched them some will not know who it was that caused their disease their symptoms to be abated and to be gone but others you will know that it is I the Lord God that has touched you and broke the power of infirmity and disease that the blood of Yeshua speaks loudly once again to bring forth mercy now because of the harshness of what men and evil spirits have done I will release a healing wave says the Spirit of God and there is a machine God says, look to light, for it will absolutely separate molecules and cells and will be like a hammer, a jackhammer that will, will go after cancer and will single it out and destroy it, but will preserve, preserve, preserve the other molecules and cells of your body. And this will be a breakthrough that I will see that will shake pharmaceutica. And God says, I will use it to give back unto this generation. 
and I will use it and God says there'll even be home kits that will come that have to do with light that will stimulate cells in your body that will cause health to spring up quickly and for disease and bacteria and virus and infections and infirmity right. to be dis I want to uh, I want to share just uh, a few minutes just to kind of give you an idea of what we're, we're entering into that I think is very extremely important that you get an understanding of what God is, is saying. And uh, how many of you are not familiar with the prophecy that the Lord talked about in 2019 about how it would start off the decade harsh? Anybody not know that prophecy? So most people do know about it. And then God said, how would it end up? We would end up in rest. I think we should put that up real quick one more time from September 5th, I think it is, 2021. 2019. Or, 20, or 2019, excuse me, 2019. So put it up there if they can. I want you to see this because it gives us hope. <clears throat> it talks about how the decade would start off harsh, but then we would come back into a season of rest. And so if the first part of the prophecy has already come to pass then it means the rest of the prophecy is going to come to pass. And that's what I want you to, that's why you're wearing your slippers, right? Because God said, and if they can't find it, that's okay, Ryan. It's okay. Let me know when you get it. But I want you to uh, look at something real quick. I want you to look at 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 11. When God gives rest, how many have your slippers on? <clears throat> Part of this rest that God's giving is rest from our enemies. And I've been studying a lot. You know, have you ever, you ever looked at times when Jesus said, rise up and take up thy bed? Why would he say that? Because rest was connected to it. And so I'm going to show some of those scriptures on Sunday, and we're going to look at that, at what it means for you. But when God begins to do something in the earth, especially with rest, it's not just so that you can get a good nap. You know, I heard recently that if you put uh, cinnamon on uh, banana and eat it before you go to bed, you're going to sleep well. I actually tried it and it worked. It actually slept good. But, but we're, we're not talking about that kind of rest. We're talking about rest from your enemies. Come on. And some of you, it might be insomnia. Some of you, it might be, you know, fear and anxiety and, and such. <clears throat> but God gives you rest. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 11. It says, even from that day, I appointed judges over my people, Israel. Now, that's very important that you understand that, that God is appointing judges. And the Lord said to me <clears throat> when I was praying this last week, he said, Hank, when I was praying over this verse, he said, there are judges in the earth right now that I have appointed that are going to begin to rule in a way that they've not ruled before, in a good way, that is going to triumph a lot of the other stuff that's going on. And part of that is the rest, because look at the, the next thing, and I'll give you a rest from your enemies. Now, I want you to go to Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 10, because not only does God give you individual rest, like we said this morning, but he also gives rest to the land or whatever, you know, nation or country that maybe you're in that's watching us. And God said this in Deuteronomy 12, 10, and he said, I will give you rest from all your enemies round about so that you dwell in what? You dwell in safety. That word safety is also preservation. It's the type of preservation. Now, this rest is not just for you, but it's for your kids when they go to school. That the type of rest that God is bringing is so that you don't have to be afraid, you know, of what they're teaching in the classrooms or what they're putting inside the libraries. See, God is shifting everything. Now, I want you to look at Deuteronomy 25 and look at verse 19. And this is extremely important. Watch this. Therefore, it shall be when the Lord your God has given you rest from your enemies all around. In the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess as inheritance. That's why we can't be quiet. We can't shut up. We got to keep speaking up, speaking out. We got to keep letting our voice be heard, our vote be heard, right? Come on, that's why you need to vote. So that you will blot out the remembrance of Amalek. Now, Amalek was one of, not only the Philistines were one of Israel's greatest enemies, but so was Amalek. And they were great persecutors of Israel. And they were evil. In fact, their name means like a deep valley. Well, how do we liken it to today? 
<clears throat> you liken it to today because whenever you study the word, you have to understand there's a historical meaning, a literal meaning, but then there's prophetic application. So what is the prophetic application? How would God take that scripture and apply it today? Because if it's just a history book, the Bible, then what good is it? If it's just a book of record of literal events, what good is it? Well, it has to be able to be applied as God begins to emphasize. So their enemy was Amalek, a very deep valley. What is our enemy? A very deep And God wants us to keep moving forward against our spiritual Amalek, the deep state. So that the name of them under heaven will be no more. And God said, you don't forget it. Because they've done a lot of evil things. Right. So I mean, you see how important it is. Look at Jeremiah 50, verse 34. I want to share this with you. And we'll put the prophecy up in just a minute there. Let me know that it's there. It says, the Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. And he shall thoroughly plead their cause. He's talking about the, the remnant that he may give rest to the land. Notice rest comes to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. Now, like what the NIV actually says, it says it this way. He will vigorously defend their cause so that he may bring rest for the land, but unrest to those who live in Babylon. Now, this is why, listen to me, pastors that are watching or church members. If you go to this church, we don't let you live in Babylon. Babylon is a worldly, compromised system. If you're, you know how you know if you're living in Babylon is if you think there's more than two genders. You're living in Babylon if you think that if two people love each other outside of what God said, male and female, husband and wife, in marriage, if you think that there's some other way because two people love each other, no, they lust for each other. You're living in Babylon. If you think that we have to be inclusive and inclusive and include everybody, then why would Jesus bring a separation ultimately between sheep and goats? Why would Jesus say in Matthew 7, there's two roads, a narrow road and a wide road. There's two trees, one that's corrupt and one that's not. He said there's two foundations, one that's on the sand and one. He did, okay, are, you, are you listening? Otherwise, you're living in Babylon. And if you're living in Babylon, listen to me. You can, you can wear your slippers tonight. You can prophesy rest. You can come through here and get lubed up like a greased pig. But if you walk out here and you choose woke, you choose compromise, you're living in Babylon. It's a system. It's evil. It's worldliness. Jesus was not all about including everybody or he would have never said, you are the light of the world. You are what? Not of this world. He didn't call us to be subcultural. You know what that is? Whatever the culture is doing, we act like them. We become that. Right? No, we're countercultural. We are the ones that set the moral standard and remind people, no, this is what God said. So that's important. I want to show you something. I want you to go, excuse me, to Judges chapter uh, 13. And I want you to look at 1 through 5. I'm kind of going to the NIV tonight because I felt like, I, I don't like the NIV to be honest with you, but I just, sometimes I feel like they do every once in a while get the scriptural way, but you got to be careful because they keep a lot of stuff out that really damages the scripture. So be wise and be careful of that. But I know the words, so I don't, I'm not easily, you know, Amen. caught off. But here's the thing. I want you to look at why it's important when God brings a land into rest, having the right leader. You're all quiet. I'm amazed at 40 million people who are not registered to vote in our country. I'm amazed at 40 million that are registered that are called evangelicals that don't vote because they don't like a personality of a guy. Can you imagine if that 80 million would add to those of us who already get it? So here's the thing. When God brings a land into rest and a people, it is very, very important that you figure it out who God has chosen. 
This isn't about those people that want to write and say, well, all, you're all, you know, you know, MAGA extremists and stuff like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about paying attention when God raises up an individual and they have a certain sound and they begin to be about the people. God, whenever a true prophet comes, he's always concerned about the people. Whenever God raises a true pastor, he's always concerned about the sheep. Whenever God raises up a true king or president, it's always the people first. And you'll see it in the way that they have their policies. You'll see the fruit of it. They won't just go to Washington, D.C., tell you they're all about you, vote for them, and then they get there and they become a career politician and forget about you. Like we've had in our, in our state here. Guys who, it's, uh, it's, it's their personal preference and a few people they have coffee with. It's true. And I've told a lot of them, I said, you guys are a disappointment. One guy, I wouldn't leave him alone. He's not even serving as our center anymore. I wouldn't leave little Ben alone. <laughs> All right, look at Judges 13. And again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. Stop right there. Why did Israel get delivered 40 years? That means 40 is a generational term. The passivity of the fathers, the parents, was passed on to their children. This is why I preach the way I preach, because I want your kids to have a future. Amen? This is why you can't become woke and agree with everything, because, you know, we got to be perpendicular. I don't know what direction is perpendicular. Is it a, oh, well, you can be upright, but just not woke perpendicular, right? <laughs> so for 40 years, watch what happens. Let's keep reading. We got to go quick because I want to get mom up here in a minute. And a certain man of Zorah named Mona from the clan of the Danites had a wife who was childless and unable to give birth. Let's keep reading. And the angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, you are barren and childless, but you're going to become pregnant and give birth to a son. Look at verse four. Now see to it that you drink no wine or other fermented drink and that you do not eat anything unclean. And so anyway, there was a certain promise. And, and uh, let's keep reading because I want to look down here because I want to show you the promise. You'll become pregnant and have a son whose head is never to be touched by a razor. The boy is to be a Nazarite dedicated to God from the womb. And he will take the lead in what? Delivering Israel from the hands of the enemy. All right, so whenever God is getting ready to give rest to a land, rescue a generation, okay, he raises up someone that he chooses. But because we're so Republican, Democrat, we don't get it. We don't recognize it. Okay. Now, let's go on. Look at what happens. I'm going to show you. In verse 24, the woman gave birth to a boy and named him. Samson. So what was his name? Samson. Samson. Now watch what happens. Look at verses uh, 9 through 10. And the Philistines went up and complained in Judah. That's where he was at. And uh, began spreading out near, what is that, Lehi? Yeah, okay. The people of Judah asked, what have you come, you've come to fight, for, uh, fight, come to fight us? And they said, no, we've come to take Samson prisoner. Samson didn't even do anything yet. Yet they were afraid of him. Pay attention. When the Philistines, the media, the Democratic Liberal Party, the rhinos attack a certain individual. And they won't stop. Do you need help? 45. Okay. Why weren't what Philistines? He hadn't done anything. What are you afraid of? Because the devil recognizes the anointing on a man more so than the evangelicals. (laughs) 
That's why I had hate mail when God kept prophesying for five years about Netanyahu and that he would come back and God wasn't done with him. And not one of those people apologize now. We've come to take Samson. Now watch what happens. Look at what happens. Verse 14 and 15. This is the problem right here. As he approached Lehi, the Philistines came toward him shouting. The Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. And the ropes on his arms became like charred flax and the bindings dropped from his hands. All right. So what happens? Philistines come. They grab him. Samson was tied up in ropes, indictments, all kinds of stuff to try to get at him. But back up, back up a minute. Look at verse 13. The Philistines weren't the ones that put the ropes on him. The pastors in the evangelical community did. His own people. The ones that he was fighting for. Just like 45 has been fighting for you. For America first. And it's been God's people. I had a guy come up to me the other day. Pastor Hank, I watch you on Flashpoint. But I probably am not going to vote for President Trump. I said, well, that's your choice. But who's your choice? And he got quiet. I said, you don't have another choice. He goes, well, you're making me think. I said, well, get out of your head and start looking at the proof. It's not hard. It's not a rocket scientist. It doesn't take an educated person to figure it out. So God anoints Samson. I'm not calling this man Samson. I'm bringing a prophetic application. Right? Who was it? Look here at verse uh, 14 or whatever it is, or 13. Then, uh, actually, it's verse uh, 11. Then 3,000 men from Judah. So who was it? That's Judah. They were, they were friends, right? People that knew Samson, part of his own tribe, went down to the cave in the rock of uh, Edom and said to Samson, don't you realize that the Philistines are rulers over us? Don't you realize that the election of 2020 was won by a guy in his basement? Yeah. <laughs> what have you done to us? I can't preach behind my pulpit and get involved in politics. And so they were the ones. Look at verse 12. Look what they did. They said to him, we've come to tie you up and to hand you over to the Philistines. Are you ready to hand your nation, your kids? Then you better start recognizing who God anoints, who God appoints. And it's not a Republican or a Democrat thing. It's we the people thing. Now watch what happens. All right, are you ready? Verse 15. And the Philistines came towards him shouting. Verse 15, finding what? He finds a jawbone of a donkey. You're getting it. When God raises up a deliverer, he'll use something of their own to take them out. What do you think God's been doing over the last three and a half years? Showing you how stupid liberalism and rhinocerism is. And not only that, I prophesy to you. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord laughing in my spirit. If God can cause Balaam's donkey to talk... And Samson can take a jawbone of a donkey. You watch who's going to start talking from the Democratic Party. And they are going to change their ways because they're going to be afraid of their own heads. And they are going to bring a lot... The jawbone of the donkey party is going to start talking. 
and they're going to talk and turn on others and themselves, and they're going to fight like this. This is good. All right. Now, do you know what the result was? The result of all of this was the land was brought to rest. After God took out the Philistines. But you have to know who God is raising up. All right, I want to show you just a couple more things. Pastor Brennan, come over here, please. Are you getting anything out of this? So I want you to look at Joshua chapter 7, verse 13. Joshua 7, 13. First thing God says to Joshua, he said to him twice, get up. So what time is it? It's supposed to get up. Command the people to purify themselves in preparation for tomorrow. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, hidden among you, O Israel, are things set apart for the Lord. And you will never defeat your enemies until you remove these things from among you. America will never have its freedom until God's justice comes in the way that he is saying. What's your job? Get up. Now I want to show you one last scripture. Look at Luke chapter 1, 70 through 71. There's a promise that the Lord, this was about the Messiah now. This is very powerful. And I want you to hear this real quick. All right, Pastor Brandon, come. I want you to come over here. Look at this. Look at what the promise was about the Messiah. I think this is absolutely profound. It says, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. Are you ready? That we should be saved from our enemies and from those, the hand of all who hate us. And God said to me, this is the promise of Yeshua and his birth. And we are to claim that this year. Amen. That God will save us from our enemies, our country. Enemies that are coming against our children. And from those that hate us. Now, Sergeant Gordon sent me a text. Sergeant Gordon, wave your hand. He's my angel. He looks like this is what angels look like right there. You can see him back there. And I just want to tell you to do this. So before we leave tonight, we're going to have everybody lift their left leg up in the air. So that way, you start off on the right foot. All right. I'm starting to quote other people's jokes because you never laugh at mine, so take it out on him. Hey, put that prophecy up real quick. Come up here, Brenda. Okay, real quick. I want you to see this prophecy. Come on, no, no, no. Come on up because we got to get, we got to pray and stuff. All right. Did you get anything so far out of tonight? All right. Watch this. All right. So look now, for there will be a word that will appear. Do not be afraid, as it shall be the word harsh for just a little more season. Harsh snow, ice, rain, winds, extreme harsh, cold, and yet where is the snow? It shall not fall, and there will be no rain, but it shall be mild. This is not an ordinary season. God says you've not just entered into 2020, but you've entered into a decade that shall be known as the decade of difference. What do I mean? And then God gives us about how there's coming a separation between you know, what he did with Egypt and what he did with, with uh, the people of Israel and Goshen and that they were plagues. But watch the, look at the part in red, especially those of you that are watching around the world. This is 2019. What you shall enter into in this new decade, it will start off how? And how many would agree that that's how it's been? But notice where we're heading. But it shall come to a place known as rest and it will be what? You know what's going to be different? It's going to be good. Because when God's goodness passes over something, guess what? Goodness overcomes what? Evil. evil. There's that level of goodness. Now, I'm not saying evil's going to go away, but we've seen what evil looks like. Now we're going to see what the goodness and the compassion of God looks like. Amen? All right, everybody lift up your left foot. There, see, I just want to see if you do it. All right, thanks. Think about what you're believing God for. Maybe it's in the prayer requests what you want to see. I also want you to just ponder for a moment or two the victories you saw in 2023. Come on, how many of you saw some victories? Come on, take a minute, bring it to the forefront of your brain. Take a moment just to remember, God, the, the, you did that. You did this. You did that. You did that. Come on, I want to give you a minute to think about it. You got your seed in your hand. And then I want you to think about 
the things you want to see destroyed that the enemy tried to exact upon you this past year. And I want you to see it obliterated. Come on, you've got a powerful weapon in your hand with your seed right now. You have a powerful weapon. And I want you to see that thing destroyed. Maybe you're bound to something. Maybe something just came to try to break you emotionally. I don't know what it is. There's so many different stories represented here. But I, I want this seed. I want you to see it as the destroyer of everything that the enemy tried. I feel like there's people that have dealt with depression. Come on, there's people that dealt with fear. There's people that dealt with frustration, disappointment. Okay, and, and the enemy tries all those things. And he, his, his plan is, is to get you to somehow believe that God not, is not working. And I'm going to tell you, don't believe that lie. That is a lie from the pit of hell. God is at work in your life. Don't let the enemy's work outweigh God in your thinking. Come on, we're destroying that with these seeds tonight in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I just want to first of all say as we have these seeds in our hand. Father, I just want to say before you, first of all, as, as pastors shared this morning, if there's anything we need to leave in 2023, we leave it. We set it back. We say we won't walk through those doors. We won't look at those things. We won't allow the, the things the enemy tried to affect us going into this brand new year. In fact, devil, we remind you, you are under our slippers tonight. We are not going to fret over anything you tried in the name of Jesus. We use these slippers to trample on the head of the enemy in the name of Jesus. And we say, devil, you are under our feet. You go and you stay there and you don't raise your head again in the name of Jesus. And now, Lord, we just say we thank you for everything you did in 2023. We sow these seeds for our 2024, and we believe, Lord, in Jesus' name, that all you promised. Father, I was just even so, I just have to say, God, so encouraged by that word about Samson. Father, it just reminded me that, God, this isn't your first rodeo when it comes to dealing with evil people. And I'm just amazed by it, Lord. And I know you are on the move in our lives and in this country. All right, are you ready to make our declaration tonight? It's on your chair right here. They're going to put it on the screen for everybody online. Hold your seed. And I want you to, in this occasion, repeat after me. I'll say it. And then you repeat. Say this with me. Say, we decree that 2024 shall be our year of divine rest. We prophesy rest from our enemies peace in our cities and for a season of refreshing to arise we declare that the harshness of the previous season shall begin to change we say that change is in the air in Jesus name we bind the powers of discouragement disappointment and dismay we bind sickness mayhem tragedy and calamity in 2024 we decree preservation divine surprises an increase of peace our year shall be crowned with the goodness of god the angels are working on our behalf to preserve us and keep us in peace. We say, come on, hold your seat tight. Hold it tight. Come on, your weapon is in your hand. Say, we say that this shall be a year of the Lord's favor and blessing. We call 2024 the year for entering in to divine rest. Now I want you to shout it real loud. Say change. Come on, shout changes in the air. Woo! Come on, just give him a praise offering. The officers are going to begin to serve you. Come on, I think you ought to clap for a moment, about 30 seconds. I want you to give God your best praise. Come on, shut up. Ushers, pastoral staff, where you at? All right, why don't you all gather over here and we are going to pray over all of this oil 
and then guys have the camera ready um, we're going to switch down to, in fact, guys, real quick, while the ushers are serving you, show everybody online our cafe where the prayer wall is for all the children that we, oh, there's the chapel. Hey, chapel. All right. And then, okay, now there's, I don't know, Bob, what did we end up, where's Bob Pettigrew? He's somewhere running around the building. Um, we had, I don't know if we ended up, what, 15,000 or how many did we have? At least above that. All right. So there's well over 15,000 photos up on that wall and photos of people in Israel. So we're going to pray over that tonight. Come on, folks. What pastor said, let's say in agreement. Come on, let's, okay, pastor said do it right now. Come on, let's stretch our hands toward that prayer wall. Father, in the name of Jesus, all of those pictures is a face. It's a name. It's a person. Father, we prophesy right now over their life and we pray your favor. We pray divine surprises. We prophesy the word preservation over them in the authority of the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And we say, Lord, bless them. Keep them in 2024. We bind the work of the enemy from exacting upon them. We stand in this room, in this atmosphere of agreement right now in Jesus' name. And we say, no, devil, take your hands off of these people and their families right now. We bind you and we break your power and now father hover upon them with your presence hover upon them i pray each person that's weary you would grant them a fresh anointing you would grant them a fresh touch i pray that they would feel the power and presence of the holy spirit all around them in their homes and in their vehicles and father i pray that every person that's bound with some debilitating disease we call them well we speak healing we speak life we speak deliverance in jesus name and father those that have financial needs we call upon the great god that owns the cattle on a thousand hills and we ask you lord to bring provision we're asking you to bring financial breakthrough we're asking you to bring your hand of, of increase to their lives and we thank you for it touch them god right now even this night let there be a tangible presence that comes upon these that they will testify of your goodness and your grace in Jesus mighty name I know father we come pray. before you in the mighty name of Jesus father we say that father every need father that is represented here we lift it up before the throne of heaven we lift it up before the court of heaven and father we are asking for righteous judgment father we are asking for your goodness we are asking for your mercy father we are decreeing that father what they have cried out for the ear of almighty god has heard and father you're answering now you're answering and we say that father those in need of finances father abundance shall come into their hands father those that are in need of debt canceling father we say that father abundance is coming to them father we call upon the god that can do exceeding and abundant above all that we ask or think and lord we remind you that father your goodness your mercy your grace your favor is upon us and father as they come into 2024 father they shall see what they have been praying for father we call back father the prodigals father we call back those that have been away from you father we say they shall hear your voice in the night hour they're going to hear your voice shouted in the streets and they're going to call upon your name again and they're going to return to their God they're gonna return to the God of their father the God of their mother and father we say it's gonna happen quickly and father we declare that those that are dealing with cancer father that have been given a death sentence we bind it in the name of Jesus we speak life we speak life abundant life father we say it turns around right now 
And Father, we pray over those that are needing other healings in their bodies. Father, strengthen them. Satisfy their mouth with good things so that their youth is renewed like the eagle. Father, I thank you that you are the one that is binding up the brokenhearted. Father, you're the restorer of relationships. Father, you're the one that causes restoration in families. Father, restoration, Father, for that which has been broken. Father, we speak over that right now. And Father, we say that, Father, for some of these, Father, even just the desires of their heart, Father, they would see the manifest blessing of you, the Almighty God. They would see the blessing, the favor. It's going to chase them down. It's going to be upon them. Father, we thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, your grace, your peace. Father, we thank you that, Father, even a spirit of refreshing now is coming upon those that have been weary. Father, we break a spirit of fear. Every spirit of fear and night terror, we bind you in the name of Jesus. We say that you go back to the dark places. And we say that in the name of Jesus, the light of God shall shine upon them. It's going to shine upon your people now. It's going to shine upon your people now. And Lord, we thank you that, Father, nothing goes unseen from your almighty eye. And we bless you for that, Lord God, in Jesus' name. All right, I want the pastoral staff to make sure that you touch all of these oils. And when I get done praying, I will lay my hands upon them as well. Heavenly Father, as we come to the court of heaven, you, the Most High God, we declare grace, your mercy, and your help in the time of our need. In fact, I just heard the Holy Spirit say, all right, some of you just need to touch yourself because you know what? Those of you that are watching and those of you that are in this room, you may not get a touch from the physical oil. But the Spirit of God is the one. He is the anointed oil. Some of you just need to touch your body right now because I'm going to decree over you right now in the name of Yeshua. Father, we speak over these people. Everyone in the sound of my voice and those that will hear later by archive, those that are on live stream, those that are in this room, those that are in the chapel, we prophesy the anointing and the covering of divine preservation. And according to Psalm 103, verse 4, we are redeemed our lives, our bodies, our vehicles, our homes, our possessions, our families. We are redeemed from destructions and tragedies and calamities, sicknesses and diseases. Therefore, they shall not and it will not be named among us. For your tender mercies and your loving kindness has crowned us. That is preservation. So we claim Psalm 121. The God of preservation. The God who keepeth Israel. Who does not sleep. Preserve us from falling. Preserve us from tripping. Preserve us from stumbling. May there be a release of your anointing of divine preservation. That preserves our coming in. Our going out. Our in between. Preserve us from evil. Preserve us from the hand of the evil one. That according to Luke 10, 19. We have authority over every serpent, over every scorpion, over all the powers of the devil. And by no means shall anything harm or injure us because we are anointed with the anointing of divine preservation. I speak that over us. I say our year is crowned with goodness. Our year is crowned with mercy. Surely goodness and mercy follows us this day and all days of our entire lives. Psalm 91, we claim that God thousands fall at our side, ten thousands at our right hand, but it cannot come near us no virus no plague no disease no sickness nothing at the hands of men nothing of the hands of evil nothing of the hands of witchcraft or divination it cannot and will not touch us because we are preserved we are protected and God we live long we live strong for we claim our covenant right our Abrahamic covenant that Yeshua you made available we will go to our fathers in peace nothing missing nothing broken not in premature death or in sickness or disease or tragedy or calamity will never be held in the jaws of these things but will be welcomed into the gates of glory in a good old age for we claim our Hasid mercy covenant rights of preservation over our lives and over our family I release it over all of these oils in the name of Yeshua the anointing of preservation you are blessed coming in. You are blessed going out. Yes. I release this anointing now that destroys every yoke, undoes every heavy burden, protects and keeps you. Thank you for the protection. 
Thank you for the protection. Thank you for the protection. We release divine preservation. Divine preservation. Divine preservation, God, over all of this. Divine preservation. We release that anointing now into every vial of oil right now in Yeshua's name. Everyone that will be prayed for, the anointing of preservation is upon them. Every curse is reversed. Curses are canceled. Return back to the sender. Nothing of the enemy can prosper. A new season, a greater season. They're coming out to be brought into blessing, into health, into wholeness, into strength, into prosperity, into provision, into great grace, great mercy, and your help in the time of need. Thank you, Lord. Say, Lord, I receive that anointing of divine preservation. It is well. I receive it. My cup overflows because the anointing is upon me. The Spirit of God is upon me. Preservation is upon me. Divine rest is upon me. God, my slippers is a prophetic act. We are coming into rest. We're walking into rest. We will live in rest. Every day shall be in rest. And you're going to give us rest from the hands of those who hate us and from the hands of our enemies. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Rest.
need to come and pull, pull, pull for your rest. That's okay. It's New Year's Eve. Groove a little bit. Come on, in the name of Jesus. It's okay. You can move a little bit. Move for Jesus. Come on, in the name of the Lord. They're coming down. They're coming down. They're coming down. Say it, come on. They're coming down. Pull it. They're coming down. Come on, party a little bit. Come on, in the name of Jesus. You're entering into rest. They're coming down. They're coming down. They're coming down. They're coming down. Let me hear you say it. They're coming down. They're coming down.
religious demons nervous.
Yeah, come on, church. You're gonna walk in with the swag. Come on. 2024. Love is pouring out, so this blessings coming down to me. Oh yeah, come on. To me. Your glory is pouring out, so this blessings coming down.
Yeah.